I think if you get Brandon Ingram or Ben Simmons, I'd rather develop that team because I don't think no one's going to be beating either the Spurs, the Golden State Warriors, or OKC. Spurs? They're still a threat. They're a second round threat. Yeah. To me, and with with the Lakers winning only uh, winning only seventeen games, our first uh, bravado and, and modus operandi is to win at least twenty more games. Maybe make it to the first round. Yeah. So uh, I feel like I'm signing off on Nicholas Batum, and I'm signing off Al, uh, Al Horford because the more research I look at it. I'm not going to give these dudes max or close to max money and then they have an injury history. Right. Well, okay. How do you feel about DeMar DeRozan wanting that full like, pass? I remember I brought that up and we were t- talking about that, but it just happens to be topical for that time. Pass on DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. I, I mean, like, we, you already got D'Angelo, you got Jordan, who's nice. You got Lou Williams, who's always the six man candidate of the year. Sure. I mean, like, the, there's no reason for DeMar to come by. Absolutely. Um, I almost feel like you saved the money for next year. Yes. And I have a proposition. You let me know. Check me on this. For this year, because you still have to spend the money either way, because you you lose the money anyways, um, you may want to spend money on someone like Hassan Whiteside still. Yeah. Just to have the five... The four, the three, the two, and the one. So you can have Hassan Whiteside, Julius Randle, Ingram or Simmons, Jordan Clarkson, and D'Angelo Russell. That's your starting young five. It, it's the Minnesota OKC Golden State wave now. Right. You know, it's the youth movement. That's still nasty. Yeah, pretty nasty. And and with Luke, you know, mm. and, and then coming off the bench, I still have a lot of faith in Anthony Brown. I think he's like a an undeveloped Damari Carroll. He's a three and D guy. You have Lou Williams at the two, uh, Nance Jr. at the four. I would love to re-sign Brandon Bass and Tarek Black, but that backup point guard, who would you have? To sign up as a, we were talking about it with free agency, right? Mike what? Conley. I know he won't want to try to be a backup. He believes he's a starter. But I mean, like you could always interchange him with D'Angelo for twelve million. If he said yes for three years, would you would you sign him? <laughs> Dunzo, right? Dunzo, Dunzo. That that's the veteran type of leadership you need on this team. Pair him up with Brandon Bass to calm everything down in, in the second unit. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to discuss: Do you feel Nance Jr. is injury prone? Because he was out during the season in his rookie year a couple of times with knee problems. Yeah. And he's not playing starter minutes. But you do see him, like, diving the same way Dennis Rodman would. He was, like, right. parallel to the floor. Like, this guy's a hustler. And Great he point. And does go for, like, the loose ball all the time. So, like, I I mean, like, a lot of people want to say when Blake was a rookie, um, he needs to slow it down. I think Larry Nance. Blake Griffin. Yeah, Blake Griffin. Right. So with Larry Nance, I mean, this guy is playing limited minutes, but he wants to prove himself. And so that's why he's giving it his all. Okay, so you still have faith. So, in other words, he might be perfect coming off the bench, but not starter minutes. Oh, yeah. And I, that's what I feel like he is now. Yeah, absolutely. If you have Brandon Bass at the five, Nance Jr. at the four, Anthony Brown at the three, Lou Williams at the two, Mike Conley at the one. That is so good. And then for 2016, maybe you get Little Rage, a.k.a. Russell Westbrook. Yeah. I saw this in a listing. Maybe I'm overthinking this. What about Gordon Hayworth for the 2000? Hayward? Yeah, Hayworth. Yeah. Um, knowing for- now, I apologize to all the Laker fans, but knowing how uh, delusional it can be sometimes. Sure. Why not? I mean, like, because he's a free agent next year. Yeah, he's a free agent, and he's actually like one of the more reasonable free agents that like we've heard Laker fans say, like, "Yo, we can get this All Star studded team." Like. Gordon Hayward's not really an all-star, but he deserves to be an all-star. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's he's the guy that's between above serviceable, could could be not superstar, but all-star, yeah. or just steady at an A-. minus. Yeah. Okay, so let me bring up this scenario for next year, because KD's done, let's say, for this year. Okay. Uh, well, let's agree. DeMar DeRozan off the table, right? Done. Uh, 
Nicholas Batum? Yeah, keep him. I mean, like, get him, sorry. Get, get him. Oh, you want to get Nicholas Batum? Yeah. I- I'm against Horford and-, and Batum now. You're against them? Yeah. But I like Batum because, like, he's a triple double kind of guy. I'm scared about his injury history. Yeah. And the development of the three that we're going to pick up. But if you sign him and you get a rookie, like whether it's Simmons or Ingram, sure. I think like they can learn from his style. So you would have... And they're also... He's also under uh, Luke Walton's area. So that's like your like lighter version of Draymond Green. So you would have the second pick come off the bench as, as the three. Yeah. Okay. So and then... If, then and Plus, if he's injury prone, it doesn't even matter because the guys will get the playing time anyways. But, but would you spend... <laughs> so would you sign him for how many years? I will sign him for like... At max, three years. In the 20 millions? Yeah. Whew. Okay, so DeMar DeRozan pass. Yeah. You want to sign Batum. I want to pass on Batum and Horford. And we want we want to agree on Whiteside. Yes. 